Torchwood Series 1 focused on the exploits of Gwen Cooper and the titular alien hunting organisation. However, the main side character of that series was Gwen's hapless boyfriend, Reese Williams. The production team had originally planned on killing the character off in the finale, but decided to keep him alive, mainly because they liked actor Kyo in too much. To justify retaining this character, the team also decided, in Russell T Davis' words, we can't make this guy look like a sap any longer. He's got to be made aware of what's going on. To achieve this, they turned to Catherine Tregenna, who wrote the two standout Series 1 episodes Out of Time and Captain Jack Harkness, which were both very character-heavy stories. However, Tregenna wanted to create a more action-oriented story, resulting in the episode Meet, which sees Reese and the Torture team stumble upon a sinister business exploiting a stranded alien beast for, well, meat. Despite Tregenna not intending this to become a narrative about vegetarianism, that's ultimately what Meat has always been remembered as. But is this story so much more? Is it actually a masterfully grilled episode developing the Torture team as characters? Or is it an overcooked alien space whale? Well, grab your meat cleaver and find the lamb sauce, because it's time to review the tortured episode, Meat. Hello! I, uh, keep thinking you're somewhere. Hell of a day. Reese Williams was the definition of a side character in Torture Series 1. He was always merely a narrative tool to anchor Gwen to the real world every now and then, and didn't really have much of a defined character himself. However, with Series 2, there was more room to explore these side characters and give them more of a spotlight. This focus is immediately clear because the episode begins from Reese's perspective as he's driving along on a normal workday, only to be diverted by a crash lorry from his company. There's something so very normal and unremarkable about it, which shows how different his world is to Gwen's. He personally knows the deceased driver and it's a huge shock to him, which is a stark contrast to the way pretty much any other death is treated in Torchwood, since our main protagonists are used to them and are just kind of numb to it all. I think it's the perfect opening to show how different the real world is to the Torchwood world, seeing it through a completely different perspective for the first time since everything changes, where Gwen went through a very similar journey of stumbling upon this world of Torchwood and aliens. Indeed, there's something strange with the lorry that causes the organisation to show up, meaning Reese finally sees what his beloved fiance does for a living. I catch aliens! Piss off. The Torchwood team investigate the lorry and find the meat is definitely a bit dodgy, especially because the genetics don't match up with any existing animal, so chances are it's alien. I quite like that Reese's firm is implicated in all this because it gives Gwen a conflict of interest. There's always been a detachment from their cases, she's never had to deal with something quite like this. Her own fiancé might be on it and she has to deal with him being under investigation. She, for once, is the one in the dark. Even though Reese is equally unaware of what's going on, this is the first time she doesn't know what he knows, and you can tell she's worried about that. She's even kind of frozen out of the team when they call up Harwoods, all she can do is listen as the exchange makes Reese sound more guilty. This is good dramatic irony, because as a viewer, it's clear Reese is innocent, but the story is set up in a certain way to make Torchwood suspicious of him, so it leads to an interesting narrative. There's an especially brilliant scene in their flat as they almost interrogate each other in a very veiled way, both searching for answers without being able to outright admit what they know. It's masterfully done and acted, there's superb tension in the scene, especially because it's from Reese's perspective, so we get to see how distant Gwen is these days. She can't even remember the driver despite meeting him. There's a fantastically achieved air of fakeness to the way both characters are acting, which adds a lot to this ongoing narrative of them being suspicious of each other. Reese only gets more suspicious as he follows Gwen and sees her with Jack, now making it seem like she's cheating on him too, which is the last thing he wants to deal with, especially because she had already cheated and drugged him to hush him up. He continues to follow them though as the team snoop around a warehouse, ultimately making himself suspicious once again. To think all this could have been avoided if Gwen had just answered her phone, it'd knock about 40 minutes off the runtime. However, because she doesn't, Reese now has to actually get involved, blagging his way into taking over where his driver left off. This is another tense scene because he's behind enemy lines. One wrong step and he gets killed, so he has to tread lightly. I think it's good for expanding his character and showing he's not just a big, dumb teddy bear. He has genuine people skills because he's so normal and human, so I think Reese handles himself remarkably well here. We then find out exactly where all this mysterious meat is coming from, 
a giant badly CGI'd whale kebab thing which just keeps growing. One of my biggest complaints about series 1 was the bad CGI of the monsters and creatures, and this kind of continues that trend, which is a shame, because the scale of it all is very impressive. I really like the visual they were going for, it's truly something to behold. I also love how the brothers don't even care what it is or where it came from, they're just there to exploit it for money. It's constantly growing so they can get unlimited meat from it. It's like a real life infinite money cheat code. It's good for showing the corruptibility of the human race, a core theme of the show. It's also interesting that Trigena wasn't intending on writing a vegetarian story, but it became one of the defining parts of the storyline, with a great moral conundrum and philosophical question. There's a constant, reliable flow of meat that's actually increasing. It's good enough to eat, there aren't obvious side effects, so it could essentially cure world hunger. If we understood how it worked, we could feed the world. But is it right? It's a living creature in captivity with no choice. It's not even like a cow or a pig, which are essentially bred into becoming food, and it's their part of the planet's ecosystem. This is an alien creature outside that ecosystem, so it completely changes our perspective on the situation, which is an interesting consequence of the setup. And I really like how it's kind of accidental by Trigena. What have they done to you, my poor friend? After seeing Reese seemingly join the dark side, Gwen angrily confronts him, and this is probably the best scene Kyo Owen and Eve Miles share in the entire show. It all feels so visceral, like a real argument as they question their trust in each other, and why Gwen has been keeping so much from him. It's utterly exquisite, a series worth of tension exploding in such dramatic fashion. His distrust of her has been building and building as the episodes went along, so this feels like a satisfying way to pay all that off, especially because a lot of this scene was actually improvised by the two actors. You completely understand his side, especially with his scepticism about the true nature of Gwen's job. I catch aliens! Piss off. We saw in Everything Changes that despite all the Doctor Who invasions and alien incursions, the general public almost go out of their way to remain ignorant. Reese thinks they were all just drugs in the water, although hopefully he doesn't think Torchwood just turning the frogs gay. However, the best part is that you can also see Gwen's point of view. Now, don't get me wrong, she's still the most fundamentally unlikable character out of the main cast, but this is a moment where she's surprisingly easy to sympathise with. Reese is definitely right to feel angry and insane insulted at her treating him the way she does, but thanks to End of Days we also understand why she has to be so secretive, because her involvement with Torchwood led to him dying, so you know she's not lying when she insists the secrecy is to protect him. It's like a weight off her shoulders when she finally tells him. She doesn't have to hide her double life anymore. It's liberating for the character, but there's still that tension in the air, since he doesn't believe her, quite rightly so. Aliens. In, Cardiff. in order to prove her alien hunting lifestyle to Reese, Gwen takes him to the hub through the so called tourist entrance. Probably because they seem to have gotten rid of the information kiosk set, so this is the only way into the hub now. I love his realistic reaction of pure disbelief at what he's seeing. I think all of us would be just a bit stunned at seeing these things too. He's then awkwardly introduced to the rest of the team, who aren't exactly used to bring your significant other to work day. It's great that he stands up to Jack, who tries to blame him for blundering in and ruining their operation. I like that Reese shuts him up because Jack is completely underestimating him. Sure, he got in their way, but he found valuable intel for them, so they're not going in dark, along with him finding a proper way in so they can infiltrate the warehouse. Jack doesn't see what Reese brings to the table, so it's a gratifying moment for anyone who likes him, which to be honest is pretty much the entire audience. The team then formulate their plan in a solid scene which shows them as a balanced unit. It's so easy for shows like this to descend into almost hive mind thinking where everyone blindly follows the leader, but moments like these show they're a proper team with their own individual thought processes. However, the truly important part of this planning scene is Reese's involvement because he's assigned the role of driver. It's nice that Gwen refuses to go along with this. She went to all of these lengths to protect him and now he's about to go right into danger and potentially die, so she would feel personally responsible for that. However, the decision is final. There's also some nice visual storytelling in this shot. Gwen and Reese are divided on different sides of the table, representing this rift in their relationship, whilst Jack is in the middle, showing how Torchwood is getting in between the pair, so it's a strong shot for quite a few reasons. Also, I feel like I should point out the Torchwood branded barrel in the background. 
why is this a thing? They also have a Torchwood basketball hoop, so I'm starting to think Yanto just got really bored one night. Another important aspect of the episode is the relationship, or lack thereof, between Owen and Toshiko. It had been simmering for a while, but this episode leans into it hard, with Tosh constantly trying to drop hints to Owen, who just brushes her off because he, like most men, probably can't read a hint if it was a flashing neon sign with loud sirens. Seriously, to my viewers out there who want a guy's attention, just tell us. We're idiots. We won't know otherwise. I do think it's weird that Tosh just had a story where she fell for Tommy, so her already being back on the Owen train is a bit jarring, but I think it's easily explainable because the events of the episode only made her want Owen more. Her relationship with Tommy wasn't exactly a real one, so she's kind of rebounding back into loving Owen again. But this is the perfect episode to begin properly progressing their storyline, because it becomes a significant focal point in the next few episodes. So this is a low stakes story where they can really kind of nudge you into realising it's important going forward. It also sets up their tragedy because she can't get through to him. You feel so bad for her each time she tries, like when she invites him to play pool only for him to make it a group thing. I think this is immensely relatable for most people, this desperate unrequited love where you just can't seem to get them to notice you in that way, no matter what you say. There are moments where it seems like Tosh is on the verge of a breakthrough, just for it to all reset again the next minute. Pretty much everyone experiences these feelings at some point in their lives, so it's a good way to create a lot of sympathy for Tosh in this predicament, we all know exactly how she's feeling. He's just a big softy really, aren't you? Another romance in the episode is the implied love triangle between Gwen, Reese, and Jack, which I really hate. Series 1 had already done the whole unfaithful storyline, but Series 2 insists on resurrecting it, and this episode is one of the worst offenders. In Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, it essentially said, yeah, we're doing this, we don't care. This further doubles down on it, and I just think that's disrespectful to Reese. I mean, it's an episode about him, with him as the main character, but the script just keeps on cucking him. I also feel like it's a step backwards for Gwen as a character, since it disregards any character growth. It's even quite disrespectful to Yanto as well, because it means Jack isn't dedicated to him. Despite that opening episode going out of its way to say Jack and Yanto were going to be a proper couple, the whole love triangle thing is by far the worst part of series 2, and it's a major drawback of this episode as well, because it devalues so much character growth in favour of cheap, cliche character drama. However, Reese and Jack do have a more positive scene together. Initially, Reese interrogates him about why they had to pick Gwen out of anyone. You give a thing about us? You know, me, parents, people who love her. Do you want to say? Jack is right when he says Gwen chose them because we saw her joining and everything changes. We watched exactly how it played out. She managed to stumble across the organisation in the right place at the right time to end up joining. But the thing that sets Gwen apart from the others is a close family. So you can't blame Reese for questioning why they didn't seem to consider these personal attachments when recruiting her. It's also a bit of a bonding moment between the two as they have a laugh about Gwen's stubbornness and how Reese wishes the rest of the torture team weren't hot. It's good for them since it forms a nicer bridge rather than them just always hating each other. But if you can handle that big boy then you can stuff it! I quite like the atmosphere as they prepare for the mission ahead, it kind of feels like a heist, the team in the back of the van gearing up and going over the plan, as Reese tries to keep his composure in front of the criminals. The music is good in this scene, doing a lot to add to the tension of it all because you know how dangerous it will be if they get caught. Reese is in deep and he doesn't really know how much danger he's truly in. However, the group managed to get in unnoticed, even getting out the van without Reese knowing. They're just that stealthy. Now that the team are face to face with the creature, we get the fantastically chilling visual of a man literally tunnelling into it, complete with mining lamps on the walls and all that jazz. It does so much to show the sheer scale of the creature. Sure, we had those wide shots before, but this really puts it all into perspective. It's a completely sentient alien life form being exploited so callously and thoughtlessly. I also think the agony and screams of the whale kebab are very well crafted. They're uncomfortable to listen to, which is exactly the point. You can't help but feel terrible for what these people are putting it through. The music is again the perfect complement to the scene, and you just can't imagine the pain and fear the creature feels, stranded on an alien world all alone and being chopped to pieces constantly. I think Jack sums it up quite well. In prison, chained and drunk. Welcome to planet. 
Unsurprisingly, the plan starts to derail as Rhys and Yanto are captured, because where would the drama be if the plan went off without a hitch? This is a TV show, we don't do perfectly successful plans here. I love the resulting tense standoff as almost the entire team is compromised, Gwen's love for Rhys becoming her weakness as she lets herself get caught to stop him being hurt. With no clear way out, they resort to the moral high ground, trying to convince Dale to stop by explaining the creature and why he should just walk away. I actually do understand where Dale is coming from. At our core, we're a species built on greed and power. It's only natural for him to want to exploit this creature for all the wealth he's gaining from it. He's merely a cog in the wider money machine. Like he says, this is his business. I'm making money here, this is my business. Got something for myself. It again goes back to that moral question of whether this is right, because this is exactly how people treat animals on our own planet. So why does Dale have to be shut down for doing it to an alien? It's a fantastic bit of subtext that adds some real shades of grey to the villains, although it doesn't stop Dale and he just shoots Reese. The music is again perfect for the moment. Since everything goes downhill, the creature coming loose and on the verge of crushing the team whilst Reese bleeds out, although the scene does give us Yanto Wick. What a hero. I love this man. With the sedatives no longer going to work, Owen has to improvise. You know, it's a good thing he's a quick thinker, considering he keeps having to bail the others out on short notice. This is the third time so far of the first four episodes in series two. This time he has to resort to euthanizing the creature. They all wanted to rescue and free it, so it's a really heartbreaking ending, a truly pyrrhic victory for the team, since they have to kill this innocent creature. However, I will say the CGI is a detriment to the ending, because it doesn't at all look like it's in the same place as the characters. You can tell they're not really touching it, it's quite a glaring issue, and it does take you out of the emotion of the moment a bit since it just looks off. Reese then gets patched up because he was fortunate enough to be shot in the same place almost every protagonist ever seems to get shot the shoulder, so he's good to go. However, because of how Tortured operates, Jack forces Gwen to give Reese retcon to make him forget all about them. Although when you think about it, pretty much everyone in Cardiff knows about them by this point. Bloody Torchwood. This is a very good epilogue, one of Torchwood's best, if only because of Reese's beautiful speech about seeing the wonder and beauty of the cosmos. You can really tell his eyes have been opened, and he suddenly has a greater appreciation of life. I think Kaiowin delivers the speech fantastically. He's like a child with how excited he is, and I think we can all relate to that on a personal level. This unknowingly convinces Gwen to refuse retconning her fiance in a wonderful moment of defiance, one of her truest heroic actions. She stands up to her entire team because they don't know what it's like to have someone in the outside world. They're all sheltered in their cold and lonely Torchwood bubble. It's kind of like how she called out their coldness back in day one. Sure, she herself has become more attached from humanity, but all her points defending Reese are completely true and justified. He has earned the right to remember these events. What he did today was so brave braver than any of us because we signed up for this, but he didn't. Miles absolutely knocks it out of the park and makes this speech incredible. It shows us how far Gwen has come as a person because she had put her entire torture career on the line for this, which really makes you respect her. She finally understands what she has in Reese, so she stands on her own two feet for once and refuses to let Tortured rule her life like it rules the others. I just think this post action is absolutely perfect for Gwen and Reese as both individuals and as a couple. The best note to leave the episode on. Meat is one of those very good tortured episodes nobody ever seems to talk about. Sure, it's not some phenomenal, acclaimed story like Out of Time or Countryside, but it's a fantastic episode that does so much character work, all while maintaining a satisfying moral quandary about the treatment of alien life. But the main morality comes from the unintentional subtext about cattle farming, and how our species creates food. The CGI of the creature is a massive letdown though, but I love the scale of it and how it's used in the narrative. The other main aspect of the story are the interpersonal relationships within the Torchwood team, with a good progression for Owen and Tosh setting up for Adam just the episode after. However, the highlight of the story is the narrative between Gwen and Reese, as she finally allows him into her secret double life. Kai Owen was always good in series one, but he is absolutely superb in me, making Reese such a well-rounded and believable fish out of water who goes on this life-changing journey. 
Eve Miles also puts in one of her best performances of the show. Since even though Gwen's writing in the episode is massively inconsistent, Miles brings so much humanity to the character with lots of standout moments. On the Torture Series 2 tier list, I would place Meat at a B. It's a very good episode, but there are a few things bringing it down. The CGI isn't very believable, the love triangle is a massive misstep, and lastly the villains don't really have any presence, they're almost non-existent. It's definitely the weakest of Catherine Tregenna's four tortured episodes, but it's still a very entertaining and thought-provoking episode with a really well-tailored soundtrack. It's also paced really well, fitting so much into its 50-minute runtime, and I really do think it is a hidden gem in the second series. And I'd like to give an extra special thank you to all my gold level patrons. Alex Marston, Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Fowlan Cortez, Franz Horn aka Line Vortex, George, John, Stefan Evan Miller and William Jewell. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs>